Man, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of EOS. It's 1090 Jake, man. I'm rocking with y'all. Y'all rocking with me. And for this video, we're going to be speaking on the fake blood SoundCloud rapper that killed five and injured another 48 after driving through a Christmas parade. Sunday, November 21st, multiple videos of tragedy shook the internet as a Christmas parade turned deadly when a man decided to drive through it, striking anyone in his path. The fast were able to move, the lucky survived, and five victims between the ages of 52 and 81 were killed. Police confirmed a total of 48 people had been injured, with 18 being minors as young as three and as old as 16. Police confirmed six of the children underwent emergency surgery, 10 remain in the intensive care unit, and two are still in critical condition. Smashing through a police barricade, an on-scene officer opened fire, shooting at the man in the vehicle in an attempt to stop the vehicular rampage. He was unable to continue firing, accounting for the possibility of a bullet striking an unintended target as the vehicle continued colliding with bodies before speeding away. The red Ford SUV was found parked in a driveway only five blocks from tragedy, and a 39-year-old man identified as Daryl Brooks was taken into custody. Police had responded to a call for a domestic dispute involving a knife just before reports of mass casualties at the parade. Arriving at the caller's home, they learned Daryl Brooks had fled the scene before they'd arrived, and police noted Daryl was not under any pursuit as he fled into the parade at high speeds. Investigators would soon learn Daryl was out on a thousand dollar bail at the time of his arrest for another domestic dispute and had been released from jail only three weeks ago. November 2nd, 2021, Daryl Brooks allegedly hunted down one of his baby mamas in Waukesha. He'd find her staying at the Economy Inn where he started yelling and cussing at her as she tried to avoid him by walking away. That's when he snatched her phone out of her hand and took off in his red SUV. His baby mama would walk down the street to the BP gas station, where she was yet again confronted by him. This time he demanded she get into his vehicle, to which she refused. He responded by punching her in the face, and as she walked off through the parking lot, he ran her over. Police responded to the scene observing blood and swelling on her face, and the tire marks left on her pants leg. She was treated at the hospital for facial cuts and bruises, and he was later arrested. He was charged with second degree recklessly endangering safety with a domestic abuse modification, a felony punishable by up to 10 years in prison. He was also charged with domestic battery, resisting an officer, bail jumping, and disorderly conduct. Darrell was already a convicted felon in two states at the time of his arrest, stemming from multiple convictions. In 1999, Daryl was sentenced to two years in prison for carrying a concealed firearm and aggravated battery. In 2006, at 24 years old, Daryl would be convicted of statutory sexual seduction, the formal term for statutory rape under Nevada's law. Daryl would post a short video that's now been deleted explaining his conviction. As soon as we fall out, all of a sudden now I'm a pedophile. Let me explain that. 10 years ago, 2006, I caught a case with my oldest daughter's mama. Yes, my baby mama. She's from Oakland. I was busting moves in Nevada. I meet the bitch. She says she want to get down, so I'm pimping on the bitch. I'll take her to Nevada. You know what I'm saying? I get cracked. You know what I'm saying? I didn't know the bitch was 16 at the time. She gave a statement to the police and told them, yeah, she was hoeing, that I was pimping, and, and uh, that she was 16, and that I didn't know that. Okay. Now under Nevada law, statutory sexual seduction is defined as any sexual penetration between an adult who is at least 18 and a minor who is 14 or 15 and at least four years younger than the perpetrator. Keep in mind, Daryl's explanation, he claimed he met a female from Oakland and brought her to Nevada to pimp her out. He was arrested and she gave a statement to police stating he was pimping her and didn't know she was 16 at the time. His statement doesn't match the fact that he was convicted of being 24 years old and having sex with her. On top of the fact that Nevada's age of consent was 16 years of age, meaning she was younger than 16 at the time. To make matters worse, she became pregnant and is the mother of one of his children, as he described in the video. 
Daryl Brooks would be registered as a tier 2 sex offender and be wanted for failing to register as one in the future. In 2010, he'd be convicted of strangulation after a plea deal, receiving only three years probation. In 2020, he was arrested and charged with possession of a firearm by a convicted felon and two counts of recklessly endangering safety. According to the criminal complaint, Daryl's grandmother told police he had a physical fight with his nephew. His nephew would go on to tell police he confronted Daryl for having his old phone and as he was leaving the house with a friend, Daryl fired a shot at them. Daryl was arrested and a firearm was found along with three multicolored pills that tested positive for methamphetamines. Bail had initially been set for $10,000, but Daryl requested a speedy trial, which couldn't be met by the courts due to COVID, so bail was reduced to only $500, and he was released. As news broke of Daryl's criminal history, I feel I can speak for the majority of the nation when asking, how the fuck could a violent convicted sex offender get a $1,000 bail after running a woman over? But not only that, he was already on bail for shooting at his nephew and his nephew's friend. Social media posts would reveal 39 year old Daryl was a SoundCloud rapper who went by the name Math Boy Fly who claims to be a West Coast blood. Fly can be seen in one of his music videos with the very same Ford SUV that was driven through the Christmas parade and a still shot taken at the parade as he drove through shows him inside of the vehicle. His now deleted Facebook contained posts supporting the Black Lives Matter movement and other race related content like a black man whipping two white men with a belt. He'd react to the Kyle Rittenhouse verdict saying he's not surprised one bit and in 2020 wrote learned and taught behavior. So when we stop back knocking white people the fuck out, I don't want to hear it. The old white people too. Knock them the fuck out. Period. Witnesses at the parade described the vehicle going from side to side and what they described as targeting people. Of the 48 injured, all five of the victims that died are white, three of them belonging to the Milwaukee Dancing Grannies, a group of elderly women who've marched through the parade for almost two decades. Demographics reported by the US Census Bureau would list Waukesha as being 88% white and criticism has been drawn after the police chief Dan Thompson stated there was no evidence the parade attack was a terrorist incident and they are confident he acted alone. Now domestic terrorism is defined by the FBI as violent criminal acts committed by individuals and or groups who are inspired by or associated with designated foreign terrorist organizations or nations. While driving through a parade of white people isn't the best look if you're black, that doesn't mean Daryl Brooks is a domestic terrorist acting on behalf of the Black Lives Matter movement. But self-proclaimed battle rapper slash militant Black Lives Matter activist Young Maze isn't exactly helping after a video emerged of him at the scene of the parade streaming live to Facebook saying, it sounds possible the revolution has started. I don't know. Now we'll have to wait and see because they did, they do have somebody in custody. We may have to wait and see what they say about why this happened. But it sounds like possible that the revolution has started in Wisconsin. At this time, Daryl Brooks is charged with five counts of intentional homicide, with the possibility of a shitload more charges being added, like 48 counts of attempted murder. Now, in my humble Caucasian opinion, First and foremost, he ain't a fucking blood. All that sex offender shit just ended all that. I don't know who he is. I see the only two other bloods in the video with him look young as fuck. So he looks like one of those old ass dudes that be on a block that's claiming some shit. And he just got some youngins around him trying to claim the shit with him. Like all that shit just getting thrown out the window. Completely dismissed. So don't include any gang charges if y'all charging him with more shit. Because he ain't a fucking gang member. For two... How the fuck he bailed out? Complete failure by the system. Now, people that play the race card, oh, he got off for this, oh, he got let off for this. This is an example of somebody being let out for multiple different things that is not white, right? And for everyone that's saying, oh, this is a terrorist act, he specifically targeted white people, this, that, and the third, there's anger from 
a group, not everyone, right? You can't speak for all white people. You can't speak for all black people. This is a specific group that believes that Black Lives Matter is a terrorist organization because of the rioting, the looting, etc. Black Lives Matter have also been a part of peaceful protests, but the negative ones are gonna make the news faster than the peaceful ones. A lot of black people are pissed off that Kyle Rittenhouse was found not guilty, not because he wasn't not guilty, but because if he was black, it wouldn't have went that way. That is my understanding of what happened. Do I think Kyle Rittenhouse was guilty? Fuck no. Do I think if he was black, it would have went the same? No, most likely when police responded and Kyle was walking by with an AI-15, if he was black, there's a higher possibility he would have been shot dead right there. So that's what's making everybody pissed off, right? Not the fact that he wasn't guilty, but the fact that if he was black, it wouldn't have played out the same. And now people are looking at what happened with this, saying if a white guy drove into a parade of black people and ran them all the fuck over and everyone else that was injured and died was black, it would be a hate crime. But because the roles are reversed, it isn't being looked at the same. Do I think that he accidentally just pulled into a fucking parade because he was fleeing the scene from a domestic situation? No, because if you're driving away from something, you're avoiding everything. You're avoiding traffic. You're avoiding red lights. You're gonna avoid a fucking parade with old ladies with pom-poms and cheer floats and Santa Clauses. You're not gonna be like, yeah, let me pull into that because I'm gonna blend right in as I stop bouncing over people. That just doesn't make any damn sense. Do I think he intentionally ran people over? Yeah. Do I think he racially targeted people? No, because it also sounds like the entire town was white so anybody getting attacked nine times out of ten is gonna be white in my opinion the only person and thing you can blame in this situation is him and the system that let him out but let me know y'all's thoughts in the comment section rest in peace to all the victims involved it's 1090 jake i'm rocking with charlie y'all rocking with me till next time